morning. <laughs> okay. Hello and welcome to another cook along. I'm Alex, also known as Gucci Arepa. Thank you to all of those who are watching later, which is probably most of you because it. I'm early. It's 9 a.m. I didn't even put my contacts on, so I'm gonna need help reading any comments, but... I can help. Oh, okay, my sous chef says he's gonna help read comments. And, uh, we've got our battle pup on set today. Can you put your paws up here? Paws. Battle pup, can you see her? Oh, no, no, no. you can see her paws. She's a real dog. And, uh, I think that's it. I don't know. Alright, so, I've been told... We are making a choose your own adventure salad dressing. What does that mean? Has anyone ever read a choose your own adventure book? <laughs> That's what I was kind of modeling this That's after. Gross. So I just gave you a template. I printed it out. And um, you just pick the stuff you like. You pick what's in season. You pick what's in your pantry. Salad dressing shouldn't be that difficult. I was just telling everyone about the salad dressing template I have um, on my profile. It's okay if you don't have it. Um, but I printed it out so that I could look at it and also be online. Um, so we're making salad dressing and it's a choose your own adventure. So I gave everyone the template and, uh, people are going to pick what they like out of their pantry, pick what they like that's in season and, uh, we're going to go for it. So, uh, at the top of the template, you'll see there are three mandatory ingredients. Fats, acid, and salt. That is the very basic template for a salad dressing. So when you go different places in the world, you can make salad dressing with whatever they have there. So I have some examples here for fats. Olive oil, avocado oil, sesame oil, walnut oil. Oh, that's what I wanted to use, sesame oil. Is that too crazy? You want me to get it? Yeah. Okay. Maybe we'll do a combo. Okay, the thing about sesame oil is that it's a delicate oil. We keep it in our refrigerator. And although a lot of Asian recipes call for sesame oil, I would not, sorry, a lot of Asian cooked dishes call for sesame oil. I would not cook with it. Um, because it's a more delicate oil, it's more likely to um, spoil with lower heat. So we keep ours in the refrigerator and I drizzle it over my meals when I'm done. You'll always hear me talk about oils and stuff. Aurea's loving on you, baby. She says you're very supportive. I agree. Finally, I, some recognition. Okay, so I have olive oil and sesame oil. I'll probably put a little bit of each of that in mine. And acid. So acid could be citrus, could be vinegar, could be... I don't know, can you think of anything else acidic? It's usually citrus or vinegar. Um, so I have some, what are these? Heirloom navel oranges, these are navel oranges. And I also have some limes from my tree outside. I know they look like lemons, but they're green on the inside. And so we're gonna use those. And salt. So I put a bunch of different types of salt. Uh, if you've seen that, Netflix special, Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat, the episode on salt, I never realized how many types of salt there are. So I just have a few types of salt. I have white sea salt, and I've used pink sea salt, and I've heard Celtic sea salt is good, and I have some black lava salt that's really cool that I got for a recipe that I never made, but it's black, and... The hack for expensive food ingredients, I'm um, going to tell you guys the secret, is go to TJ Maxx and buy it half price. So they don't always have exactly what you want, but a lot of times they have what you want. Oh my gosh. They have what you want for less than you'd pay for it in the regular store. I don't, don't know if you can tell, but it's black. And um, can you see? It's black. It looks like dirt. But when you put it on your food, it actually starts to kind of dissolve. And then you can see, like, the salt crystals behind the, behind the, 
behind the black, but yeah, it's salt. Okay, tools. This is what I didn't have. Okay, real talk, I don't know if I'm ever going to host a cook-along at 9 a.m. on a Saturday again, because it's really early. Uh, so, tools, there's not a lot. I have a jar. This is a repurposed uh, olive jar. It used to have olives. I'm actually going to use this one because it's thinner. You want a lid that seals. And then this is a citrus press. This is a small one. You can get them really big, uh, but this is a small one. We use it for our limes. You put the citrus in. I'll, I'll demo it, but you can usually find this in even just regular grocery stores like Albertsons should have them. Food for Less, Food City. And then a garlic press. So you put the garlic clove in there and you smush it and nice. you have to touch it less. Okay, so I have that. And for my salad. So in California, we got a lot of stuff in season. We have kale, we have citrus, we have pears. So I've got a bunch of pears that I'm gonna use for my salad. And I have two different colors of kale that I'm gonna use for my salad. And um, I also have rabano. Rabano. Which is uh, known in English as radish. These look really beat up, but we're not going to eat the leaves because they're really uh, sandy. Uh, the cool thing about radishes is that they grow in a lot of, they grow really easily. They're like a beginner food. So this year in my garden, I'm going to grow radishes. So I bought some. It's This is a really sorry bunch. It's like six radishes, but we're going to add those to my salad. And, uh, but yeah, just try to find what's in season in your area when you're making this salad and, uh, or not, or pick whatever's in store. But I like to pick what's in season because it usually means that it hasn't traveled across the world to get to my mouth. And usually, especially if you go to a farmer's market, everything there should actually be in season. So it'll taste better because it's not being grown under strange conditions and it's not being given weird chemicals to taste better. So sometimes they'll give tomatoes and stuff uh, ethylene gas to ripen it, but then you get a nasty tasting tomato. I also have some mint, so I can't guarantee that's in season everywhere, but I'm pretty sure in California mint is in season. I checked my, I checked my area under that link I left for you guys. Okay, I have my jar. And I have my fat. Okay, we're gonna start with, so the, the ratio, this is for Polly when she watches later. I do have a ratio this time. It's approximately two parts fat to one part acid. I was just double checking to make sure I didn't give it to you backwards. So two parts fat, oh sorry. Two parts fat to one part acid. So here's what we're gonna do. Are we gonna measure? No, we're not gonna measure because that's more dishes. So, we're gonna put one part sesame oil, one part olive oil. This already seems like a lot of dressing. All right. I bet y'all can't even see that. Oh, perfect, the comments are just right around it. Here we go. So there's my oils. You can actually kind of see the different oils in there. They're, they're laying one on top of the other. Anyway, all right. And then we're gonna put half as much vinegar. Oh no, not vinegar, acid. But I'm gonna use, I'm not gonna add a sweetener today and I encourage you all not to add sweetener until you've tried this without a sweetener, but I am gonna use orange uh, because as some of you may know, oranges are sweet. Now this orange is not gonna fit in my press, so. Those of you who don't have a citrus press, don't have to worry because it's true that you can squeeze citrus without a citrus press. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna squeeze a little bit in here. Remember, it's one part acid to two parts fat. So I'm just gonna eyeball it because usually, especially if you're not doing crazy stuff, you should be able to see the difference between the acid and the fat because the oil and the water don't mix. So I'm just using a fork to kind of like squeeze out some more of this liquid. These aren't as juicy as I had hoped, but never fear. Smells good though. Hmm. 
Oh, and if you guys want to get extra fancy, let me show you another tool. XL. This is the boss level. Boss level. Boss level. This thing. Oh, God. <laughs> I don't know what the name of it is. Scraper. Scraper, as we call it here in this house, has a little tiny holes that you can scrape your citrus with. So you can take it across the top of your citrus. I would wash it first, but then you get what's called zest, citrus zest. Oh God. Oh, it's called a zester. Oh, it's called a zester, I've been told. And then you can put your citrus zest in your marinade or your dressing and it's gonna taste extra awesome. We put citrus zest in our uh, with our fish when we sous vide it and uh, it tastes really awesome. Okay, so remember two parts fat to one part citrus uh, acid. So you can kind of see the it's not quite there to halfway. Oh, I forgot to lock this cart and it's moving around. All right. All right, we're gonna try to squeeze the rest of this orange in here. This is the other half. I've started on the other half and I'm just taking this now, if you have a larger citrus zest, it would be good for this. So, remember, it doesn't matter what acid you're using. If you're using vinegar, if you're using oil, the ratio stays about the same. But, you also want to taste it. So, if you like your stuff sour, then you can use more acid uh, than half, half the batch. Okay, so I'm going to call that, I'm going to say it's about one to two. I just want to keep showing it to you because it has separated, which I think is really cool. And there's some citrus zest in there. All right, another vital ingredient is salt. This is just white sea salt. Oh! I may have just dropped the lid in there. Got some comedy in here for you this morning. All right. So don't do that. And should be okay. No harm, no foul. All right, next, so we have our three essential ingredients in there. And now we're going to talk about aromatics. Aromatics comes from the word aroma. These are foods that are really fragrant, that um, I want to say depart but I don't know if that's the right word. They give a lot of uh, flavor to your foods. So what are some aromatics? Aromatics include garlic, onions, anything from the onion family, green onions, scallions, shallots, chives, red onion, any of those, uh, ginger. All of these are super fragrant foods that you can add to your dressing to give it kind of a oomph. So, as promised, with the garlic press, I'm going to show you how to add a little bit of garlic. I have two cloves there. I have a feeling that's going to be plenty. So, I heard that you can just put garlic straight into the garlic press and uh, the skin comes off. You guys, usually I'm way better at multitasking. I feel a little slow. Maybe it's because I haven't had my coffee. Anyway. So that's one way to take the skin off, is just smush it in that garlic press right away. Um, another way is to, I'm almost positive y'all can't see my cutting board today. Another way to do it is, yeah, they can. baby's checking my cutting board visuals to make sure that you guys can see it. Isn't that sweet of him? Okay, the other way to do this garlic thing is to, Cut off the tip and cut off the edge, and then you just smash it with a knife. I just took the flat part of my knife and pressed down with my palm. And that takes the skin right off. So now I have the skin off of two cloves of my garlic. I jammed them both in this garlic press. They're in there. I don't know if it's in focus or not. Uh. And we're just going to smash this. So you just squeeze it with, if you're me, both hands. And you just smash that garlic in there. 
And what I do is I just use the edge of my knife to kind of slice off the pieces. Uh, that's plenty of garlic for such a small dressing, so I'm not going to put much more than that. All right. So this is cool. Other people will show you ways to smash garlic and chop it up. And I guess I should do that too because I didn't tell you guys to get a garlic press, so... I ought to show you. It would be nice, Alex, if you could show us how to cut garlic or chop or smash or whatever. All right. Let me rinse my hands, although I'm about to touch more garlic, so really, is there any use? All right. So just a special hint. In between steps, I would definitely put the lid on uh, just because it's, for me, it's easy to just knock stuff over, as you can probably infer. And I wonder if garlic would taste good with mint. I wanted to add mint. Anyway, here we go. So for those of you who don't have a garlic press, which is totally fine, you don't need a garlic press to be a cook or a chef. It's not required. You don't need a garlic press to succeed in life. So there I go, smashing it with my palm again. I cut off the tips of each side of the clo clove of garlic to get the skin off. Why don't we eat the skin? Because it tastes gross. Yeah. All right, so now imagine you have a clove of garlic that's mostly intact that you haven't smashed. And you are going to do a different type of cut. We're still going to, remember we had to talk about sharp knives. Get yourself a sharp knife. Don't be dumb. I don't usually call people dumb, but if you're trying to cut with a not sharp knife, you're really just making life hard for yourself. Okay? So get yourself a sharp knife. And this cut is more like a, a fan cut. So it's like a pivot cut. I think that's what it's called. Okay, we're going to do some movement with the camera. I want you guys to see how I'm cutting. I need help, baby. Can you just hold this for the people while I cut this garlic? Okay, we're going off script. Just hold it as still as you can. Hold your elbows towards your body. There we go. And... Okay. I'm going to try You're five. doing great. Snaps for Sergio. All right, here we go. So you're going to do cut kind of like a, a pivot cut, and it's going to look kind of like a fan. All right, that's not as beautiful as I had hoped, but... All right, so see, you're just pivoting. You're just chopping along the way, and then I'm using my finger to kind of scrape it off. As you can tell, this garlic is a little sprouted. Is that going to kill me, you ask? I haven't been killed yet, and I eat my garlic with little sprouts all the time because I can't get my act together to finish a clove of garlic or a head of garlic before we it sprouts. Eat sweet potato that's sprouted. Shh, don't tell people all our secrets in one video, please. Okay. All right, so do you see how this pivot cut, I keep my fingers here, and I'm just, that part of the knife stays in the same spot, and I'm just pivoting around this garlic, okay? So that's it. That's how you cut a clove of garlic. If you are not a pro with a garlic press, um, keep in mind, it doesn't make you any less cool if you don't have a garlic press. You are just as cool, and you are just as good of a chef. All right, here we go. Okay, so we've done the aromatics. You can also add onions. You can also add ginger if you want a more Asian-inspired dressing you can add ginger and we've added two parts fat one part acid we've added our salt and we've added garlic now herbs so uh, as long as we're choosing our own adventure I'm adding this mint to my thing to my dressing because I want to taste how it feels how it tastes and what happens if you don't like it Alex I just won't add mint to this color, this combination anymore. It's not a big deal. Okay, so I put a few sprigs of mint, and I'm going to try the hack that someone taught me. We're just going to move this garlic over. All right, someone taught me. You just roll it up. You roll it really small into a little tube. So I just stacked all the leaves on top of each other, and I rolled it into a little tube. And... You just start from the edge, and you just slice little pieces, and look at that, you have tiny sliced, watch your fingers, 
watch your thumbs, watch your fingernails, and you have sliced herbs. This works with anything with leaves. It works with larger plants as well. And it's not in focus. That's okay. Okay, so we're going to add this to my dressing. We're going to see how it turns out. Now you could add, oh, I should have added basil. That would have been really good. Anyway, now the last thing is sweeteners. I have sweeteners down because I know some of you have a sweet tooth. I recommended at the beginning of the video and I stand by my recommendation. Try to make a salad dressing without a sweetener before you start adding sweetener. Um, go ahead and if you add honey, you can just add little by little and then you can shake it up and see if you like it. With the dates, what I would do is I would soak my date in just a little bit of hot water. Uh, just cover your date with hot water in a tiny bowl and then you can put it into your food processor um, or your blender, whatever you don't mind getting dirty. And then you can blend it into like a little date water um, and just add a little bit of that at a time. Wait, do you have to put water in the blender first? No, you would put your date in the blender and then just add that date water little by little. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for that clarification. All right. So what do you have in your salad dressing, Alex? I have sesame oil. I have avocado oil. I have juice from one navel orange, I have lemon zest, I have garlic, and I have mint. That's all I'm going to add. And now we're going to shake it up like Taylor Swift. Put on a nice song. Shake it off. Shake it off. Uh-uh. Shake it off. All right. Just shake it up. And look at that. What a beautiful salad dressing. Okay. You never have to go to the store again. You never have to buy a salad dressing again. So now you're going to taste it. And see if you like it. It doesn't taste very sweet to me, actually. I'm going to see if I can add the rest of this orange. It's good. This is good. Just going to add a little more orange juice. All righty. And then we'll shake it up again. It's pretty garlicky. I don't know how you guys like uh, your... Do you like things garlicky? Let me know in the comments. All right. Second try. Okay, that's pretty good. All right, so our dressing is made. Next. Oh, gosh, I didn't prepare for this. Seasonal salad. Alex, how do you make a seasonal salad? That's easy. You just go to the farmer's market or the grocery store. You find some foods that look good to you that are in season, and you add them to your salad. Oh, that is easy, Alex. Why didn't you say so? All right. I'm just going to show you really quick how to take this kale off of the stem. All right. Oh, dear. Allegedly, you should be able to just take your little fingers and, oh, someone likes kale. Someone just sat up over there. Come here. No. Up, up, up. Good girl. What is that? She loves kale. This is the stem of the purple kale. This is purple kale. It looks like it's thick. She loves kale. Okay. Good girl. All right. Again, I'm going to show you again. All right. Actually, I don't know why I'm putting it in there. I'm going to do the same thing as what I told you with the mint leaves, except for kale's a little bit harder to roll up. But we're just going to... Actually, no. This is curly kale, so it's kind of hard to roll up. I'm just going to cut it in strips to make it easier to eat. Okay, so we have some kale in there. I'm going to put some more mint in there. Actually, I probably should slice up the mint. Sound effects brought to you by Sir Joe this morning. If you like what you hear, check out his SoundCloud. Check out his SoundCloud at www. He doesn't have one.com. 
All right, next, we're just going to add some more of this green kale, but you see how you can just get it off of a stem just by kind of like, I don't know what this motion is, stripping it. All right, add some kale to my salad. Now, the thing that I'm the most excited for are these pears that I got. And so I have a whole basket of fruit. And I bought some pears because my what's in season told me that pears are in season in California right now. And I went overboard and I bought one of each pear. So that's really exciting for me. And I'm going to add them to my salad. And I don't know if all y'all's stuff gets really messy in the kitchen, but definitely does over here. If you like something, don't put it in the kitchen. All right. So a pear can kind of be cut like an apple. Remember when you're slicing something, you want it to have a firm base so that it doesn't move around on your cutting board when you're trying to cut it. Now, pears do have a core, so I'm just going to cut that core out and take those seeds out. This is a very small core. Whoops, she missed. And I'm going to add these little pear pieces to my salad to kind of give it some more texture. Now, this one in particular was a... I took the sticker off without even looking. This was a Bartlett pear. So I'm adding some Bartlett pears to my salad. Slice them as thin or as thick as you want. This is your salad. I'm going to make mine rustic, which is the way that vloggers code for saying homemade or kind of ugly. I don't know if I told you guys that last week. So if someone calls your salad rustic, it's kind of an insult, but you can totally reclaim it if you want. But mine is going to be rustic for sure because all my pieces are different sizes. So there's my Bartlett pear. I'm putting in half a Bartlett pear. And what else do I have here? I have this red pear. It's called a red danjou. Uh, it's French, apparently. So I have this French pear. I, the store said they were local, so hopefully it was grown in California and it just has a French name. Alright. So, whoops. I tried to slice off the core, but the core is thicker than I thought it was. Alright. So this one has like a little blossom at the bottom like some apples do. So I just kind of cut that off. And... I'm trying to cut out the core. This one has kind of a bigger core than the last one. All right. So we're going to cut this cute and rustic. <laughs> Rustico. Rustico. If anyone disagrees with my assessment of the word rustic, let me know and I'll stop telling people that it's really just code for fancy people calling your food ugly. Um, but I think that's what it is, personally. Okay, half of this French pear, it's a red pear, it has this beautiful red skin, but inside it's the same color as another pear. So if you have pears, if you are inspired by this and you go to the store and you buy pears and you're like, Alex, these pears are kind of hard, they're not really ripe yet. Well, how do you get them to be ripe faster? One way to do it is to actually put them in a paper bag and roll up that paper bag, which I said I was going to do last night, but I didn't end up doing it. Uh, but so... Fruits, once they're picked, they release this gas called ethylene gas, and it actually helps the food ripen. And by putting it in a paper bag, along with all its pear friends, that ethylene gas stays in that paper bag, and it helps your food ripen quicker. Uh, another reason not to put ripe foods in your refrigerator next to foods that you're trying to keep unripe, or even on your counter or wherever you keep your food, if you have something you don't want to ripen anymore, and then you have something that's very ripe, you want to keep them separate. So, and that trick of the paper bag works with almost anything. If you have like an apple or, or a pear, you can put it in with your avocados if you want your avocados to ripen faster. The hack. All right. Oh, and I said I was going to put in these. I actually am going to put in these rabanos. What are they called in English? Radish. Radishes. Um, they may not be a traditional pear salad component, but, heck, this is 2019, nothing is traditional anymore. 
I tried to wash these off and they're still pretty grimy, so I'm gonna wash them off again. All right, so radishes. They have these uh, tap roots and they have these stems. So we're just gonna kind of just slice off the top and the bottom, get that tap root off, get that stem off. She loves radishes. All right, one day I'm gonna show you how to use a mandolin, but today we're just gonna slice our radishes into tiny little pieces. I cut it in half and my radish is in beautiful tiny little pieces. Okay, so I'm gonna slice these a little bit thinner. This is a cutting technique called the rock. So you just put pressure on both sides and you just rock back and forth. I don't know if you can see past the comments. <sighs> All right, putting those in my salad. I so can't wait for watermelon radishes to show up at the store so I can start adding them to my meals. All right, so we got some kale in here. We have some pears in here. We have some radish in here. Very simple. Oh, I think I put some mint. And I'm just going to do the thing that the restaurants do that I hate and pour the whole dressing in there. And the reason being is because I actually want to massage my kale a little bit with the acid so that um, it gets easier to eat. And I know you all maybe have seen me massage kale before. And the point about massaging your kale is that it breaks up those fibers in the kale and makes them easier to digest. So the acid does that a little bit, but honestly in five minutes, it's not gonna be the acid, it's gonna be the massaging. So I'm just gonna massage it for a little bit. Now I probably should have done this separate from the pears, but no pears are so good. So if you have kale and you're massaging it, I would recommend you massage it for 45 minutes. All right. So now we're gonna plate this onto a beautiful plate. Yeah, onto a very beautiful plate. All right. So we have this white plate so that you guys can see how pretty the salad is gonna be. My recommendation when you're making food is to use as many colors as you can find because that's going to guarantee that you have more nutrients or more types of nutrients in your salad, okay? So if you can find purple kale, if you can find things that are red, if you can find things that are pink, if you can find anything that's blue, that's what you want to be doing when you're assembling your salad. Try to get a bunch of different colors in there, okay? Those are called phytonutrients. Phytonutrients are nutrients that come from plants. And uh, you can't find those in, they're, they're different from macronutrients because they're not fat, carbohydrates, or proteins. So those phytonutrients are those nutrients that we need in small, well, need in small amounts, but that aren't really listed on the back of your, uh, food label, but they're supposed to be good for you, and different plants have different phytonutrients, and a good way to tell what phytonutrients are in there is by the color of your food. All right, so this is pretty much ready to eat. I know my sous chef is going to want to help me eat it, but here's my salad. I'm going to try to make sure it doesn't do that, and baby, are you ready to try it? Sure. All right, baby's coming over. He's going to try it. <laughs> uh, also, send me pictures of your salads. I'm excited to see them. And uh, look forward to choosing what we're going to eat or cook for Valentine's Day. That's this Thursday, I think. Yeah. So keep an eye out for that. It might be in the form of a poll, or I might just tell you what we're making, because I already asked for people's advice. Happy Lunar New Year. Happy Lunar New Year to all those celebrating. What is the year of the pig? This needs fruit. Needs fruit? It has fruit. It needs more fruit. Why? I mean, it's good. All right. So that's it for now. Now you have a template. Oh, nuts. Nuts would be a good idea. 
Now you have a template you can use to make your own salad dressing. Um, and if you make it ahead of time, then those herbs and aromatics will kind of infuse into the oil and the acid. So you'll get more of a taste of those. So, but you can serve it right away, as you can tell. <laughs> and uh, it should be great. So thanks so much for joining me. Thank you for those who are watching later. Love you guys. Thank you so much for your support. Love you guys. Bye.